First of all, I got here this morning and I was looking at the staff, the pastors, the elders. Everyone's like this. And it's like this. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I feel the same way. Uh, we were in the water for four hours yesterday. <laughs> My shoulder holding, holding the back and the nose going like this. Oh my goodness, I am so sore from doing that. 972 people signed up and about 1,005 people got baptized. We got out of the water, we got ready to leave. And then a little girl, I'm gonna guess that she was maybe six. She came up to me and it was the cutest thing ever. She came up and she looked up at me and I said, well, where's your mom? And she said, over there, I go, bring, bring your mom and let's find out. So her mom came over, her mom didn't speak English. So we had a translator. Jesus said, do not forbid the children to come to me. So number two is children understand the gospel better than we do. But three is the important question. Does she understand that Jesus died on the cross for her sins? <laughs> Jesus died on the cross for our sins, yes? And he rose again from the dead. Yeah? He's God. Jesus came to earth to save us. Right? Are you ready? So God, we thank you now as we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Here we go. Ready? Wow. Wow. I believe the church is transcendent. I believe that what God is doing with the church at this hour is our moment to make history, and history is being made. We baptized a thousand people today. That's part of history. Why? So many people have been coming to Christ since we opened the doors. And I love the fact that Jesus said, Behold, I have set before you an open door that no man can shut. And there's a reason why he said that, that no man can shut. I love the fact that as a shepherd, I have no authority over the doors of his church but to feed his people. The doors belong to him. And so we rejoice, we thank God. And uh, again, there's a lot of people rejoicing today as they've entered into the waters of baptism to publicly proclaim Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, it doesn't get any better than this in this world. When the COVID situation hit our nation, we saw people gripped with fear. We saw people gripped with hopelessness. We saw people confused. And on top of it, we saw people frightened and suffering from the fact that they didn't have the sense of community uh, that their church had given them. And so now with what we're seeing, I have to tell you, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because we've been seeing 25, 50, 100 people accept the Lord weekly. Uh, and so this is just the fruit of the going forth of the gospel. And let's be honest, this is God depositing hope in the lives of people who have found out now they've realized the world is a hopeless place. I think the greatest thing for us as believers is to do what Jesus said. Remember the disciples had been out fishing all night and they said they caught nothing. And Jesus said, let your net be let down on the other side of the boat, which seemed crazy, right? Who is this Galilean rabbi telling us how to fish? But they obeyed him. And what happened? Uh, the net was not big enough. That's exactly what we're experiencing. Our nets are not big enough. We're having to add services. We had 700 youth last night show up for a service. We had 138 confessions of faith just among youth. This is happening every week. And I think the challenge to all of us is, do you want to make history with the Lord? Because if you do, you got to get out into the water uh, because He is moving. We're just trying to keep up with Him.